Frontier here and hello from me and thank you if you've been following the progress of this painting. Firstly, I might say that portraiture is not my forte, so I have been stretching my skill set, particularly with uh, a large painting, a large canvas like this, which in itself uh, presents a number of challenges. Well, it's taken me 26 hours to get to this stage, which is the blocking in stage. Uh, I began with a stain over the whole canvas, a burnt sienna, and you can see it glowing through uh, here in these in certain parts of the painting. And then I sketched in the, the details and then I painted the underpainting, which was the, the tonal areas, like the, the light areas here and the dark areas. And I painted those in green and people were asking, why have you painted those in green? Um, green is a complementary colour to red, which is going to be the dominant colour in, in, uh, in the flesh tone. And so it acts as a good base underneath uh, those tones. So I've uh, blocked in now, it's taken 26 hours, and the next stage is the modelling stage, and the next stage after that is the refining stage. For this stage, the palette I've used is uh, Naples Yellow, Yellow ochre, blush pink, cadmium orange, uh, crimson, raw amber, burnt umber, and black. Now for the black here and for the black background, I actually use French ultramarine blue and burnt umber to achieve black. For the next stage, uh, I'm going to use uh, Michael Harding professional paints because I'm now getting onto the top layers and I'm going to limit those colors to four colors. There's a Swedish, uh, painter who developed this um, palette, his name was Alexander Zorn, and is called the Zorn palette after him. And the four colours he uses are titanium white, ivory, black, uh, yellow ochre, and cadmium red light. Now, is it possible to get a range of colours just from those four colours? Now, there's no blue in there, no primary blue, you see. So I've done... Um, an experiment many years ago uh, using the Zorn palette and as you can see you can get a range of colors uh, by doing various ratios and mixes uh, it's very very good for uh, for skin tones so I'm hoping that by well in not hoping uh, in my experience, by actually limiting colors, you actually unify a painting. So the next stage is modeling. And uh, it's I, I love when I'm painting, I'm a gestural painter, so I like a flick here, I like a, a, a good bold mark there, but I'm going to refine this. Um, it's going to be, I, I'm going to stretch my skill set once more to, uh, to a more classical approach. So um, before I do that, let's have uh, a recap. 